Training against the wall can be one of the most effective ways to improve your pickleball game just simply because a wall never misses. We've heard it all before that a perfect practice makes improvement or perfection, some other people might say. But on the flip side, if we have an imperfect practice and we practice bad form, which can happen a lot of the time when we're hitting against a wall, then we build bad habits and then it ends up actually hurting us more than helping us. So there are three specific things that I have found that have helped improve my wall drilling sessions so that I get into a match and it feels more realistic, as if that wall drilling session was actually against a person. And then it helps me to be able to perform better in tournaments and do better down the road. So stick around to hear those three things. Let's open the playbook. So tip number one of three is that you want to get a wall that has a tilt mechanism. It's not absolutely mandatory. There are many pros out there, especially in tennis, that started on a wall, right? And they were just hitting against a wall. The problem with the wall is that it's not going to be accurate for hitting against or playing against a real person, simply because when I hit against the wall, watch what it does. It comes downwards. No matter what, it's always going to come downwards off the wall. Downwards. Now, if you get a wall that has a tilt mechanism, it'll make it more accurate for playing against someone. Because if you think about, if you're dinking against someone, they're hitting their dinks with arch. They're coming up and then back down. If you're hitting volleys against someone, they're coming back just straight across, sometimes down. So that's what's nice about this, the Dink Master, that's what I use. You can use any wall you want. I'm not biased towards the Dink Master, but it's just the one that I have. I literally, I ordered it and it came like two days later. So really fast with fulfilling orders and they have a great warranty. So that's why I use them, but you can use any one. I'm not biased towards one or the other. With this wall, if I tilt it downwards, I can practice my defense because the ball is now going to come at a downward trajectory towards myself. So if I'm standing here and I hit, it's coming down. So it helps me to be able to practice. It helps me to be able to practice that because the further down that that ball goes, I can hit against and then it comes at my feet. Whereas now I can tilt it upwards and it's gonna be a little bit more accurate for playing against someone, maybe being in a hands battle. You have to obviously mess with the tilt to see what works best for you. But I figured out that this tilt right here is good for just those neutral balls coming back. So you can practice drills such as hitting the ball hard and then resetting it soft. And then keep practicing those over and over again. If you want to practice your offense, you put it on a bigger tilt and then you can straight up just hit the crap out of the wall, right? Hopefully not like that. <laughs> but I'm here and then I'm hitting an overhead and then I could catch the ball. So feet in, overhead, catch the ball, whatever it is that you want to practice, that will make it more accurate for playing against a human. Like I said, it's not mandatory. I'm not trying to sell you this wall in particular or anything like that. All that it is, is if you have a tilt mechanism, your trainings are going to be way more effective and then they're going to be way more accurate for how you would actually train against a human being. The second thing to focus on with this particular tip is the timing. Now this is stuff that everybody knows but they don't think about. If I make contact with the ball perfectly out in front, it's gonna go perfectly straight out in front of me. If I make contact with the ball slightly further out, it's going to change my paddle angle from flush to slightly like this, which is gonna take that ball cross court. If I make it out in front still, but a little bit later, it's going to change my paddle angle to hitting the ball inside out, if you know what that means. Essentially down the line. Okay, so if we take into account that and we implement that into our practice and training sessions, it helps us to be able to make them more effective and accurate so that we're not just practicing that ball out in front of us. And the best way to do that, to practice cross court against a wall that's obviously stationary, is we wanna change the angle of our body. So if I wanna practice going cross court against a wall, I'm just gonna slightly angle my body toward away from the wall this way. And then I'm gonna be making contact out in front here, and that's gonna help me with that cross court. Okay, so all of that is going to be cross court when you go up against an actual opponent. Obviously, when you're going against the opponent, you're standing flush towards them, but now you're making that further out contact to go cross court. Down the line is gonna be here, inside out is gonna be here. It's just a further back contact point. So just take note of that. Also, your paddle angle as you're dinking against the wall. If that wall doesn't have a tilt mechanism, your paddle angle a lot of the time is gonna be like this, and then you get into a real match, and all of a sudden you're popping everything up because the wall's constantly hitting it down, so you're having to constantly hit it up. Whereas if it has that tilt mechanism, you can have a flush paddle face or even a downwards paddle face, and then it's gonna be a lot more accurate for what's actually happening during a real match. So now let's move on to point number two, which is just as important. 
Okay, tip number two has to do with also the tilt mechanism in the flat wall. Honestly, if you're gonna practice your ground strokes against a wall, you need a tilt mechanism. Otherwise, it's kind of pointless. Or there are some caveats to it, some other things that you can do, which I'll talk about. Because if I'm baseline distance away, which is about right here, the wall is realistically gonna be the net. So I would actually get another 22 feet behind the wall, bounce, and then my opponent would hit it. So it's giving me that extra 22 feet when I'm playing against a real person. Whereas when I'm playing against a wall, I don't get that extra time. And the ball is just gonna come flat down off of the wall. And I'm not gonna be able to practice good habits, okay? Where I'm keeping my head down as I hit through the ball, where I'm split stepping prior. You won't have the time. And also something that's essential um, is that you wanna bring the tip of your paddle upwards prior to hitting a ground stroke so that your momentum can bring it down and then you can Nike swish it out outwards and upwards. If you wanna see how to hit a forehand in pickleball, click this video right here in case you don't know. But I won't have that time to practice those good habits. So if I'm training ineffectively, then obviously I'm gonna build bad habits. It's not gonna be helpful at all. It's actually gonna make you worse by doing that. So that's why training ground strokes against a wall can be so difficult and why you want a tilt mechanism on your wall. So again, shameless plug, but if you have a tilt mechanism, it's gonna be a whole lot better. It's gonna be a whole lot more accurate for how it would actually be to play against a person. And then if the baseline's here, I wanna stand another five to 10 feet behind that baseline so that I can practice a realistic shot. Now, a lot of people will say, obviously you have a lot more footwork involved. You're gonna be able to practice your endurance by standing closer to the wall. Totally accurate, but I wouldn't say to do that with ground strokes. I'd say to do that with volleys, which is what we're gonna talk about last, because volleys are gonna be most effective to train against a wall. Doesn't mean you can't train ground strokes. So if I hit against that flat, if I hit against the actual wall, it's coming down. If I hit against this, I have a slight tilt on it. It's gonna come slightly up and I can practice getting my tip up every single time. Okay, and I'm standing a little bit further off of the wall than where the baseline would be. That's allowing me to actually be able to brush up that ball and actually have an accurate feed. So I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore, but I think you guys get the point. <laughs> So essentially, if you have a wall that has a tilt mechanism, practice your ground strokes. If you don't, something that you can do, stand further back and let the ball bounce twice. And then it's gonna be more accurate for when the ball would actually come and hit your paddle. So allow that ball to bounce twice and then hit it. A lot of people might think that that might build a bad habit and that you'll get into a match and magically be like, I'm so used to letting the ball bounce twice, but zero chance that that's gonna happen, okay? Unless you're just totally incompetent which you're not, okay? You're a smart person. So when you get into a match, you're gonna allow the ball to bounce once, but to just practice ground strokes, you can allow it to bounce twice or simplify everything, get a wall that tilts. Okay, the third tip to practicing against the wall is to practice volleys majority of the time. You can also practice your dinks. They're gonna be just as effective against a wall. Um, if you practice stuff like ground strokes or your serve, that can also be effective, but it's not going to be nearly as effective. I guess a serve could be, absolutely. Now that I think about it, a serve could absolutely be effective <laughs> because you're not having to hit that ball off of the bounce or anything like that and practice your timing. So serves can be great. Returns, not so much because that's pretty similar to ground strokes. So I would suggest when you're practicing against a wall, practice your volleys the most because a wall is going to be best for improving your hand speed. Okay, there's nothing that's gonna be better. Hitting against an actual person is obviously better than anything but sometimes we don't have that privilege to play against someone that's at our level or even better than us. And so because of that, or they just don't want to, a wall is gonna be the second best option. It's gonna be a close second. Because the closer that you get to a wall, the, the quicker that that ball is going to come off. So when I'm practicing my volleys against a wall, if I'm standing here, I'm obviously gonna have all the time in the world to hit that, to hit that ball. And hopefully you have a wall behind you in case you miss, right? But if I stand here, you can hear it. it's a whole lot quicker coming off the wall. And then if I stand here, it would be insane. So it can really help you. There are tons of different wall drills that you can do. I actually have an app that's the Pickleball Drills app. Um, I have wall drills on there and ball machine drills, just in case you don't have a drilling partner, which if you're watching this video could be very probable, or you just wanna get better on a wall in general. You can download that app. I'll link it in the corner and also at the top of the description, but corner of the video.
I think it should be here. And you can check it out, but tons of different wall drills to practice. The app has one free drill for the wall drills, and then the rest of those you have to upgrade for, just so you know, before you download it. Don't want you to just go waste your time if you're not willing to pay for a drill or something like that. But at least you have that one, you can go ahead and get started with that one for free, check it out. Um, but those wall drills will really help you to improve your overall hand speed. That's what a wall is gonna be overall best for. So check that app out, you'll absolutely love it. Last thing is, just came out with these overgrips. Okay, these are the Pickleball Playbook overgrips. Nice. Design these, I wanted to get something that's really tacky but also lasts long. So they're made out of um, polyurethrin, I think I'm saying that right, which is the tacky stuff as well as microfiber. So if you know like a microfiber towel, it's gonna to make it extremely, uh, an extremely tacky, moisture wicking um, grip so that it's gonna last a long time. Microfiber is not for the tackiness, it's for the long lastingness. Hopefully that makes sense. You don't need to know that. All you need to know is you need some of these because they're absolutely awesome. Um, but I've loved them, I've, I've had really good feedback for them. We're already sold out on a lot of them. So I had to place another order and now I know how much to order, but people are going crazy over them, so pretty cool. Um, I hope that you enjoy them. I hope that you enjoyed this video and grateful for you guys that watched it. Please hit that subscribe button if you're new to the channel and to my day one subscribers, thank you so much. And I'll see you on the next one. Peace.